I, th I think one of the most important technologies uh, to the development of electronic music has to be the, the analog uh, keyboard that was developed in, through the late 60s you know, by Bob Moog and the others. Um, you know, those, uh, possibly even earlier than that, you know, the sort of uh, bespoke gear that was developed you know, in the laboratories of the scientists you know, with oscillators and all those sorts of things. But I think it's when, once that became, uh, I guess, a more purpose-built keyboard with, with waveform modifiers, again in the form of the Moog, I think that was the that sort of late 60s, early 70s was an absolute turning point. So I think that piece of equipment, more than anything, is, 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 is essential to the development of electronic music. The technologies I think that are important to the evolution of electronic music would be, well obviously the Moog synthesizer would be one very important piece and I have one of those just here. Mm -hmm. Finally, by the 60s, synthesizers were starting to be developed in a way that allowed programming to occur in real time with the music. These early synths were often experimental, special built devices, but soon synths followed a modular design ethic in their construction. They would become less experimental and much more viable as a live performance instrument. Robert Moog, a student of one of the engineers of the RCA Mark II, collaborated with Herbert Deutsch in 1961. Together, they developed a voltage-controlled synthesizer. This device would improve the practicality of synths. With the advent of the mass production of electrical components like transistors, professional amplifiers and other supplies, electronic music devices started to become more affordable and more compact. In 1963, the Buchla became available. It would be the first commercial modular synthesizer. A year later, in 1964, Robert Moog developed his first synthesizer. It was less like a machine and more like a musical instrument and was first viewed as a curiosity, but by 1968 it had caused a sensation. Among the first music performed on this synth was Switched on Bach by Wendy Carlos, an album that sold more than a million copies. It became the top-selling classical music album of all time. Moog's work with synthesizers helped to establish standards for control interfacing. Later that year, in 1965, Hi-Fi becomes commercially available to consumers. And after hearing a Moog synthesizer, Keith Emerson from Emerson Lake Palmer buys a Moog and uses it to record their hit song, Lucky Man. My earliest recollection of electronic music would be um, hearing something like Autobahn you know, by Kraftwerk, um, certainly the Doctor Who theme, um, but then, and that's, that's as a really young, you know, you know, seven or an eight year old, something like that, but uh, later on, you know, hearing things like um, Fanfare for the Common Man by Emerson Lake and Palmer and seeing them play those huge keyboards in the Montreal Olympic Stadium, that was, that left an indelible the, the first piece of electronic music that I really took notice of was actually uh, Chase by Giorgio Moroder and uh, on the ABC just before the news at 7pm they used to have this blue and yellow um, horrible digital video effect clock and the second hand would be ticking down to the news and you'd hear Giorgio Moroder's Chase in the background you know dun 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 and that piece of music has stuck with me. I first heard electronic music uh, sitting in my car I was sitting in my father's car actually, back in about 73, 74, I think it was Popcorn, played on the radio. And uh, after that, I think as I got a little bit older, maybe a year or two, I was able to watch Doctor Who. And I was mesmerised totally by the, the theme song and I had to figure out you know, what was making those sounds and, and how they actually made it. So that was certainly probably my earliest uh, introduction to electronic music, would have been yeah, through those two medias. The 70s were the defining moment when electronic music reached the world through popular music. Synthesizers became cheaper, more robust and portable and they were adopted by popular music bands. 
Demand from studio musicians led to the increased production of compact voltage-controlled synthesizers for their portability. This increased the popularity of synthesizers even more. Moog's response to demand was the release of his Mini Moog. The Mini Moog rapidly gained popularity with 12,000 units sold. One Mini Moog would ultimately find its way to Gary Newman, another to Pink Floyd. Other manufacturers would soon emerge to compete against Moog in the marketplace. ARP, Casio, Oberheim, EMS, Lyricon, Korg, Roland, Yamaha and many more would follow. The new kinds of electronic noise that synthesizers could create contributed to the formation of the genre. Early genres such as industrial music were pioneered by groups such as Throbbing Gristle in 1975, Wavestar and Cabaret Voltaire. From the late 1970s onward, Gary Newman, The Human League, Landscape, Visage, Daniel Miller, Pete Shelley, Heaven 17, Eurythmics, Severed Heads, Thomas Dolby, OMD, Yazoo, Erasure, Art of Noise, Yellow, Depeche Mode and New Order developed new ways of making popular music by electronic means.